Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to Silent Hill Shattered Memories, and, uh, yeah, it's about time we meet the goth chick punk rebel rocker herself, Dahlia. I don't actually know what her maiden name is in this game, I'm gonna assume Gillespie, but, uh, yeah, this is Dahlia Mason. Harry's wife, and quite a bit of a contrast from the, uh, cult leader that we saw before, and by the way, I don't know if I brought this up in the previous part, but, uh, this nightclub looks very futuristic. Like, you could probably put this in Star Wars Jedi Outcast and it fit in just as well. Who are you? Are you on something? I'm Dahlia. Hottest piece of ass you'll ever see in this town. You are Harry Mason. Generally, a fun guy to be with. What are you wearing these for? Stop being a dick and let's get going. We'll get to Simmons Street and see Cheryl. Cheryl? Your daughter... Oh, come on, you're not that wasted. That's why we're in this lousy club. To get the SUV so we can drive up to Simmons Street. That's right, but... It's just... No more craziness. You're freaking me out. Now, you might be noticing a few things, and I'm talking specifically in the context of Shadow Memories here. You might be noticing a few things different between Dahlia and Harry. For one thing, Harry seems to be, you know, adult and more worried about his daughter. Whereas Dahlia, and as you are going to hear in the uh, little slip that I'm going to give you in a second, seems very callous, a lot younger, and very uh, teenage state of mind, which does kind of speak volumes about Dahlia's character in this game, and at the same time also, I think, really highlights. Uh, their characterization in the grand scheme of things. Don't want to spoil anything because I think that goes into ending territory, but again, I will highlight it and. Good lord, it's. It, it is shockingly realistic, oh, is uh, the point I'm trying to get at here, because. Well, uh, again, and I can partially say this from experience, but, uh. Women like Dahlia exist in the real world and, uh. They're not very pleasant to be around. I mean, it's kind of tragic, but at the same time also just, uh... It's just a factor of human nature, is all I'm gonna say. Incidentally, though, a uh, nice musical piece here by Akira Yamaoka. Very nice, very chillax. Beautiful. Shit, the bridge is up. What can we do? Run up to the control room. See if you can get it moving. <sighs> okay. Look. Don't flip out on me. No forgetting what you're doing and wandering off. Hey, I got it. I'll be waiting. Jesus. You're mean. I don't like you anymore. But yeah, much in the same vein as Silent Hill 1, we now have a bridge puzzle to solve for some reason. Unfortunately, no, you cannot go into the room below and pick up a rock drill. As fun as that would have fucking been, because... Lord knowing, the other world sequences won't protect us, and dang it, that rock drill could save many lives. But yeah, we also do have a very gimmicky puzzle, as is, uh, Shadow Memories tradition, and, uh, well, that also involves a phone call, so I'm gonna be taking a drink of the Pepsi, and as we explore around in this bizarre little chamber, I don't know, just enjoy the call as Harry disturbs what must be one loving family man out of his sleep, and possibly interrupts his kid at whatever time of night this is, probably at like 12, 2 in the morning. Just rough estimate. It's Jimmy here, how's this? Mr. Capra, my name is Harry Mason. I need to lower the bridge. Hey, well, wait, will you? You know what time it is? Probably woke my kids. I'm sorry, but this is an emergency. I've been in a car accident. My daughter needs my help. I just... Okay, okay. You want to know how to operate the bridge controls? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Mason, listen carefully. You need to start by pushing the... Hello? Then... Oh, no! Is Silent Hill affecting the call? Uh, well, actually, no, because as we're about to find out in just a few seconds... Yeah, Dahlia was giving us a call to move our ass, but as it turns out, our ass was moving fine. It was she who was blocking us from getting a call. And yeah, you do get a message, so you don't need to worry too much about that. It's 
Uh, just a guy basically telling us exactly what we need to do in order to operate these bridge controls, which, uh... We'll get to that when we get to it, but, uh... Hmm... Does make me wonder a little bit, because, uh... You know, I think I'll explain that after I get around to talking about the puzzle. In the meantime, though, uh... Well, again, I guess if I could possibly talk about the mapping of Silent Hill, but that I mean in terms of uh, the cartography of the environments here. Not a one-for-one -one match for Silent Hill 1, but at the same time you do get a few recognisable locales, as we've seen before, as well as some new ones, so... You know, it does make Silent Hill Shadow Memories a very uh, unique sort of experience in the sense of... Why are we looking at that again? I don't know. It makes it a very unique experience in terms of experiencing areas old and new. But again, I don't think there was really much uh, symbolism to be discussed in regards to uh, yeah, I that guy. Yeah, but again, uh, basically the way in which this puzzle works, as the dude explained, basically, wait for the buttons to flash, pull down the lever, wait for specific colour-coded ones to either pull them down, wait for a moment, and then pull them down. And, uh, well, let me just say this. Like... <laughs> Three years of a college education, mastering in a degree, what basically amounts to pull down the switch, wait for the button prompt to finish fucking beeping, and that's it. Like a fucking 40, like 40,000 if not $80,000 tuition for three years, and going through test anxiety and all sorts of, you know, psychological processes just to get through fucking university, all just to do this, which could possibly be operated by any average munchkin. I would hope to goodness that in the real world that's a little bit more complex than just pull down the levers when the button prompt activates, but uh... Uh, and again, if any bridge operators watch this video, I'm pretty sure part of it's, um, automated at this point, but like, at the same time... <laughs> God, I feel incredibly fucking sad. Let's go. Level with me, Harry. This a joke. You putting me on? No, I told you. Cause if you got a problem with me, but you're too chicken shit to come out and say it, that's low. It's pathetic. Have some self-respect. I'm not making this up. I'm not. Just drive. Okay. No, it's not okay. I think you're full of shit. Dahlia, listen. I'm not gonna sit here and have you screw around with me. I don't need the hassle. And, <laughs> yeah, the other world soon comes out to play. But we won't be getting to the other world this part because this is kind of a twofold sort of scenario. Onto what Dahlia was saying though, again, it is obvious that we are dealing with some weird alternate universe shenanigans right here, but even still. Like, I mean, I will say that while Dahlia's level of anger is understandable, like, I mean, I used to sympathize, like, when I played the game for the first time, I did kind of sympathize with her, but... The more I start to look at this situation, she doesn't seem like she's being very rational, which might be uh, which might be part of the point, since she's more teenage Dahlia as opposed to, well, the adult, uh, the adult woman that was married to Harry Mason, but... Uh, I don't know, like, I mean... It's something equal parts kind of annoying, but also realistic about these sorts of people, because again, people who do make assumptions and jump to conclusions and immediately pin the blame on, you know, other people, because the situation they're in is completely fucked every which way and sideways, it exists, and, uh, hmm. Like, I mean, it, it is just... Christ, I, I don't know. I'm kind of... I, I can't really focus my thoughts at the moment, because right now we are, uh... Beneath the water and we are gonna start droning pretty soon. Dang, and uh, this was also the part which comes into play with what I was talking about earlier with the uh, radio. It comes into play a little bit later because in the meantime, we have something that's actually quite odd here. Like, what's meant to be playing here is actually like some really creepy music that's just slowly building up in tension. I think, I think something might have glitched here because like, what's going on is that like, you're just hearing the, uh, sound, the sound design, but with no music. So, uh... Yeah, maybe, maybe it's kind of like what happened during the Sonic Adventure commentary in the sense that whenever you picked up the speed shoes, like, it just sort of, like, glitched out the regular music and just kept on looping. Because uh, one thing I did notice, like, the Memento sound effect with the... Yeah, that ended up playing, like, uh, right at the very end, actually. And uh, as you transition into the next scene, which is kind of strange? Uh, but I mean, hey, not everyone is going to be perfect, and quite frankly, compared to other technical issues I've had, I'd rather something like this... Uh, more, th more so than 
you know, the kind of issues that I had with Silent Hill Downpour in the sense where parts of the footage would get corrupted and I had to fucking edit around that shit. Ugh. <sighs> it wasn't a very fun time. But, I mean, on the other hand, it does also mean that I get to show off both sides of Chain of Memories since I also had similar troubles recording that game, but, you know, that's just the price you pay when you do the video game reviews and the qualmentaries and the lady with the thing and the ice sculpture being frozen, unlike anybody else. But yes, uh, much in the same way with Lisa... That was a spoiler, that's gonna be edited out. Uh, much in the same way with uh, Sybil, actually. Yeah, this isn't gonna be the last we see of Dahlia, despite the fact that she was uh, frozen. And again, this is what I was talking about right here. The music doesn't play in because we... Oh no, right, I might be thinking of something different. Never mind! Maybe we could've died, but listen to the radio one last time. So we can get a song that's always on our mind. Always on... On our mind... Yeah. I wanna... By the way, I don't know if it's at this point... Oh, it might be a little bit later, actually. But yes, soon we shall be seeing what is going on here. Yeah, the raw shocks and thus they freeze up the car, which you might think is a good thing since that would stop the uh, water flow from coming in. But at the same time, you must realize you are doomed. <coughs> Ugh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck's going on with me? I hope, I hope to God I'm not getting sick. Uh, anyway. But yeah, you'll soon see a message which you are not seeing because I'm playing with the radio like a uh, impudent child. And basically it's just saying something equivocal to Stop fighting it. Uh, it'll only get harder from here on out. There we go. I believe this is actually the Mary Elizabeth McGlynn version, which is what you hear in the soundtrack. Yeah. Really good piece uh, de uh, on either one who sings it. Again, I like both. And uh, always on my mind, especially for this, uh, the techno track as well. It is a damn good piece. But yeah, so what it says in the frosty windshield is basically saying stop fighting it. Do not get closer to the truth, Harry. You must stay here, in the car, where you will be where, where you will be free. But yeah, well, sensibly, we gotta get out of this place because, uh, well, we're gonna drown. There's also something that was, does also have a bit of a weird discrepancy about it, like in terms of graphical pop-up. This looks a lot clearer than it does in the Wii version. And also the music immediately starts for some reason. And then Dahlia was, like, unfrozen, apparently, even though, again, she doesn't die, she comes back later on, so... The hell's going on? And, like, this isn't just a graphical hiccup in the PS2 version, it's, uh, intentional, so I don't really know what's going on here. And this is what I mean with the transition thing. God. Nasty, but inevitable. Everyone is going to die, even if we like to pretend otherwise. You could die tonight, in your sleep. Why doesn't that terrify you? How would you like to die? No, wait, let me guess. You'd want to die surrounded by family. It's academic, really, as we're only truly conscious of death when it happens to others. Yet to my age, you'll have seen plenty of people die. There, one minute, then gone. Okay, game time. There are seven pictures of people on the table. Your job is to tell me who is dead and who is merely sleeping. Divide them up. Left, dead. Right, sleeping. Well, thank you, Dr. Kaufman, for that interesting, uh, lecture on death. There is actually a bit of a trick to this puzzle, and, uh, Kaufman does reveal this right at the very end, but, uh, yeah, they're all sleeping. Uh, this is basically more of, like, a trick question kind of thing, so, uh... Again, I don't know if real therapists actually, uh, do these little games like this, um... Kind of seems like it'd be a little bit traumatic, actually. 
uh, I don't know, I guess maybe some in like more extreme circumstances, but again, I don't really know what to say. Uh, hmm. But I mean, in any case, this does also... I think it does actually have a bit of a major effect, really, in terms of uh, one of the specific endings, and I think might be the primary cause as to why exactly I uh, got the outcome that I did. Uh, what I'm talking about is mainly in terms of endgame stuff, but uh, you'll see the results of that in the next part, which I will elucidate on. So uh, stay tuned for that, so on that note, I'm Solid Scully, keeping new metal, and next time on the Silent Hill Shadow Memories commentary, uh, well, we're gonna be continuing the rest of this. Take us away, Kaufman. It's just an exercise. Doesn't matter if you were right or wrong. In reality, they were all sleeping. Okay, let's get back to it.